In Waco on ABC or ESPN2, massive collision in the state of Texas is actually overshadowing the Red River rivalry. TCU and Baylor in the top 10 at kickoff for the first time ever. It's the first top 10 matchup in Waco since 1956. 110th meeting used to be a crosstown game because TCU's campus was originally in Waco. 51, 51, and 7 is the all time series mark there. So the winner gets the lead, and the winner gets to remain a serious playoff contender despite all the skeptics. Art Bryles telling his team they want to ignore you, but they can't <laughs> as long as you keep winning. Bryce Petty off a game that he called terrible feels pain free for the first time in a while. His receivers are also getting healthy. He sounds very determined. The Bears defense remains a huge reason for their dominance unsung defense and speaking of huge the bald man on campus went to Waco to visit with big Sean Oakman quite a character Oakman is so big, he used I-35 as a slip and slide. Oakman is so big, he wears two watches, one for each time zone he's in. Oakman is so big, he saves cats from trees by reaching down. Sean Oakman gets home for the sack. Sean Oakman is just a freak. Six foot nine, 280 pounds. I want to talk about the height thing, because obviously I'm a 6'6 six, six guy too. I've lived with it. Does everybody that you meet think, they ask you if they don't know, who do you play basketball for? Exactly. Do, do you mess with people ever? I, I swim. I play <laughs> tennis. Um, I don't play basketball at all. How high a level do you think you could have played basketball? I could play basketball at the highest level. What, the NBA? For sure. Come on. Why not? Well, I don't know. You tell me why. No one's going to deny me. Uh, there's, there's, no, there's no reason why I couldn't. I'm tall, athletic. Why not? If I would have played back in the day when you, you could throw a few bows and play a little rough. Yeah, I would have been great. The pressure coming and sacked, and that's big Sean Oakman from the blind side. Is there any specific personal goal that you have? I just want to lead the nation. I want to be the, the number one sack leader in the nation and for tackle for loss. I watch a ton of football, and looking at the tape of you last year, it feels it's almost like raw ability takes over. Exactly. My role last year was to disrupt and cause mayhem. And you did. <laughs> and I and I did. But now as as a leader on this defense and as someone that's growing up as a man, you have to be able to take those steps to the to the next level and knowing that technique will win the battle at the end of the day. And more pressure, another sack. The fifth sack of the night for this Baylor defense. Your defense this year is, is nasty. How much of a chip do you guys maybe have on your shoulder to show the nation what your side of the ball is capable of? It's a huge chip. We, we, I watch y'all every, every morning. Every morning, y'all bash my defense. Or Who's bashing your defense? Y'all either, either bash them or y'all don't speak of us. Mm -hmm. And I feel as though for these past few games, the defense kept us in the game. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the offense. It was the defense. It's just that brotherhood that we have that we won't be denied. And we want everybody to know that. To be fair, your, the challenges defensively will get tougher starting yeah, so this week. It was a challenge from day one, you know? Our plan is to shut out everybody. And if that don't happen, we will still have a great game. We're not asking for no handouts. We're not asking for no charities. That's our mentality. We're definitely going to show you. Keep paying attention, right? You're going to pay attention one day. Legal issues at Penn State. Had to transfer to Baylor. It's worked out well. He's considered a first-round prospect. Now, that Baylor defensive line doesn't have Jamal Palmer, their fast-switch guy off the edge, is out for the season. They got a couple of very tough tackles in there, and Bo Blackshear and Andrew Billings. And then, David, as you look at the challenge that Bears defensive front against a very improved TCU offense, it's Ron Boykin. How do you see it breaking down today? Well, it is a big challenge, and Sean Oakman's a big man, and he's going to have to be the difference maker because you go through the tape and you say, okay, there's one guy out there that, that can't be blocked if he doesn't want to. Look at this right here. Good job. We talked about 6'9", 280. Coming in there, inside, two guys, the running back coming towards him, splits him, finds the quarterback. This is the most impressive one to me. You're talking about his size. How about Brock Daigle, 6'8", 305. You want to show how you walk the dog? Walk the dog right back to the quarterback, six yards in the backfield, get the sack. I still have question marks, Chris, about this 
the uh, Baylor front seven about this defense. And today against TCU, they'll get challenged. I want to see them step up on a consistent basis. Oakman isn't a consistent guy. You see flashes. I want to see it for a whole game where he takes over and puts his footprint on a game. Yeah, TCU's offense. David, the most improved in the country, 171 more yards per game than they averaged last year. You got Sonny Cumbie, Doug Meacham, guys who came from Lubbock and Stillwater, respectively, to help out and really transform Gary Patterson's offense. Both those offenses had success last year against Baylor's defense, which Patterson pointed out. Here's a chance for a milestone for TCU after that big win over Oklahoma. They are just 1-19 all time on the road against top five opponents like Baylor. Whether these people and the skeptics around the world want to understand it or not, the winner of this game remains very much a serious playoff contender, and the players know it. Winning this game will show people that we are the real deal and that we deserve to have a chance to play in the national championship. Everyone say we don't play anybody, and if we go out there and handle business, you know, it shows that we deserve to get a chance in the playoff. The biggest thing for us is see if we can do this two weeks in a row. Two top five opponents you got to play back-to-back. Uh, -back. If you want to win championships, you got to be able to do it week after week. I give them respect. They have a great defense, and we have a great offense. I'm sure our offense will put on the show. They're explosive. you got to stop the run. I think that's one of the hidden secrets people don't understand. They really run the ball well. And you gotta, you got to watch out for the speed on the edges. You'd like to have 15 players. You only get 11. But uh, we got to hold them to one last point. Both teams are on the top 10. Two big Texas teams, you know, so it's, it's going to be a showdown. Mentioned earlier that squadron of speedy receivers finally healthy as Baylor and Bryce Petty told us yesterday the back feels good. He was in pain last week, now he's pain free. How do, how do you see it, Lee? Well, first of all, Kirk, are you ready for me to give you the reasons Baylor's going to win? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. They're number one in the nation in scoring offense, the number five in scoring defense. Pretty good. They've beaten the last 16 ranked at home, they won 12 straight home games. 12 straight home games. Baylor wins this one only by a touchdown and an extra point. Seven points, and you know, you're talking all these facts. Now they have a new stadium and a better atmosphere, which is even more conducive to trying to be able to win this football game. But let's face it, this is an opportunity. Everybody's been looking at Baylor and saying they look good, but let's wait and see. see. Now they get a chance against a real defense that traditionally plays them pretty well because Gary Patterson understands how to disrupt timing between Bryce Petty and his receivers because his corners get up tight and they jam the wide receivers to disrupt the timing. And they're also very creative on when they bring pressure, when they blitz. Here, get with Tejada, the corner comes and gets the pressure, comes up with a sack last week. This is Kevin White, one of the better cover corners in the Big 12. Sometimes he's up tight, sometimes he gives a cushion. Look at his instincts, look at his eyes on the football, well coached by Gary Patterson. So. One thing about Baylor, Lee just gave you a lot of numbers. Here's the number. Look at the left column against top 40 defenses going back to the beginning of last year and versus all the others. You're talking about a 30-point difference when they play top 40 teams versus all the others. Yards per game. Look at the bottom left column. Very few big plays at all against the better defenses. So with that in mind, I really think even though we heard Bryce Petty feels a lot better, he told us that yesterday, Shock Linwood to me with Gary Patterson's outstanding pass defense. Des, I think yeah. he's going to be the key in this game. And I think Baylor wins this football game because of all that great stuff that Lee just gave you. Yeah, exactly. Playing at home, that atmosphere, they've been waiting for credibility. Today they get it. That was a great tape. And we're going to get the show back up after that Michigan segment gave us a great <laughs> rating bump. That was really good. <laughs> I think the biggest difference is going to be TCU's offense. Co-offensive coordinator, Sonny Cumbie. Worked with Trevon Boykin this offseason. He's done a tremendous job getting the kid more relaxed, preparing him as a starter. And then he tailored the offense to his strengths. I think that you look at Trev Trevon Boykin right now, he's completing 62% of his passes, making really good decisions with the ball, 10 touchdowns, only two INTs. I think you look at the guys around him. Let me give you three names. These guys are all Americans in track and field. Cameron Echols Looper, Kobe Listenby, and Jordan Moore. He's got a lot of speed on the outside. I can blow the lid off of a defense. I think TCU pulls the upset. Good, I got yeah. the horn frog good. today. That's a good one. That's a good pick. Right. We'll see. We'll see.